So here we are again, and it's a pleasure once more to be with you. I look forward to these times with you. There are many things on my schedule that uh, I wish sometimes I could cut back the amount of time that they demand, and I confess that to you readily. But the moments I spend with you each week in this fashion, no, I'm delighted for them. I look forward to them. I just am thankful to God that I can meet with you in this fashion, even for five, six minutes a week. I've been thinking today, again, of a portion of the Bible in which I'm currently reading, namely in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, a book that was written when the church was young, when there were people who had made their commitment to Christ and now were wavering. They were wondering whether they had made a mistake or whether the price simply was too high to pay. I think they found it easy enough to believe enough to stay true if the times were good. But if these times now were threatening, if indeed to believe and to follow the Lord Christ meant that they might also lose their lives, their family, their sacred fortune, if that were the case, should they back away from it? And so this person writing to those believers told them how great a thing they had in following Jesus Christ made this powerful case for the fact that God who had spoken in time past to the prophets had in these last days spoken by his son. Now, a part that has been fascinating me in the last several days is this portion in uh, chapter uh, 3 and chapter 4 of the book of Hebrews where uh, three times the same language is quoted. Language from the Old Testament, in which now the writer of the New Testament brings it up to date for the people in this day. He believes that what God said to those people long ago has to be said again to the people of God. Listen to it. Today, if you hear God's voice, do not harden your hearts. Three times in what would be a page at the most in any of our Bibles, the same word is spoken, the same phrase quoted, the same emphatic statement made. Today, if you will hear God's voice, do not harden your hearts. You say to yourself, why would anybody harden their heart if God is speaking to them? If God would speak to me, what a privilege. I'd want to tune up and get sure that my antenna is set just right so I wouldn't miss a word of what God would say. And yet, in truth, we are too ready, I think, to turn off God. If we are like our spiritual ancestors, I suspect that we have the same hazard, that today when God speaks, we're in danger of hardening our hearts. This, I suspect, is because when God speaks to us, sometimes the voice of God to us is saying, shape up. And not many of us like to be told to shape up. If God would speak and say, you are just wonderful. I have nothing but congratulations for you. We'd tune in rapidly to that. Or if God would say, a good share of the world is wrong, but you're right, we'd like to hear that. But when God speaks to us and says, you must do something to make things right, you must repent, you must change your ways. Then something in us automatically begins to resist. And what do we do but just what our spiritual ancestors have done since Old Testament times into the New Testament times to this very day? We begin to harden our hearts so that we do not hear the voice of God. That's so tragic. But the question is, of course, what does the writer mean when he says, today, which day is this? Was it a day long ago just for the Jews when they were traveling through the wilderness and hardened their hearts? Well, that's what the writer of the New Testament is harking back to that time long ago. Again, is it just the early Christians who, to whom this person was writing when three times in a short passage he says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Is that it? Or could it possibly be that God is saying it to us 
still today. Well, the writer himself says, but exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today. So what is today for you, for me? It's today, that's what it is. Whatever day it is, there is the possibility, indeed the assurance, that God would speak something to us. And in this day, when God speaks, a quiet voice, a thundering voice, a voice of reproof, a voice of encouragement, whatever it is, let us not harden our hearts, lest we miss the voice of God. That's my word for you today. And that's my word to myself today. When I hear God's voice, when you hear God's voice, don't harden your heart. God bless you today.